Head over to MansionMarket.com and have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Fuse Countdown. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are working together under a crunch time to try to stop explosions because we are bomb defusal techs. And we're trying to get through all the bombs and defuse them all before we all explode together. But today we're going to be taking a look at the difference because running a game series just came out with Fuse Countdown, which is a standalone sequel. When I first heard about this, I thought it was an expansion for Fuse, the original game. It's not. It is a standalone game that can also be mixed with the original. So what I'm going to do, I've done the official rule school for both of these games. So what I'm going to do is give you the one minute overview for both games, and then I'm going to come to the uh, on the other side and I'll talk about the differences between them and which one I like better. Fuse is a cooperative game in real time that takes exactly 10 minutes to play and you'll be trying to defuse as many bombs as you can. Over the course of the game, you'll be following some certain rules on the cards to try to put specific dice. Sometimes you'll be building pyramids and other times you'll be building big stacks of die. You're moving fast because it's timed, but don't knock it over because then they all have to go back in the bag. To defuse bombs, sometimes you'll be following rules for colors and mathematics as well as making some dice larger and smaller than others in order to defuse bombs. And even when you're successful, when new bombs come out, sometimes you'll get a fuse and people will have to lose more dice. And it's all tracked with an online free app from Renegade's Game Studio, which helps you keep time, puts a little fun into it, and allows you to keep score. Clear the last bomb and you win. But think quick and cooperate with your friends because if you can't use a die, it gets rolled and you must remove a die from one of your bombs that matches a color or number. Fuse Countdown is a cooperative dice placement game where you're trying to fuse the right amount of bombs before the 10 minute timer runs out. Dice will be rolled each round and each player is trying to take a die and place it on one of their bomb cards. You'll be trying to follow certain rules like specific numbers or possible numbers, or even colors, or color, or number of any color. And hopefully, you're able to place that on one of your cards, and we'll get a new set of dice for the next player. And as the cards begin to fill up, you have less and less possibilities, and sometimes not all players will be able to take dice. And if you can't take a die that round, you'll have to take a spark card, which you'll also have to fulfill to win the game in the end. But you'll get some help from some split dice that are multiple colors, and when you complete a bomb, it will be placed off to the side to score, but you'll also get a new one that you get to draft. There's all different cards that make you place dice in different configurations and stacking. And each player will have a special ability that they'll get to use when it's their turn to roll the dice. All right, now before I get to my final thoughts, I want to let you know that if you like my content, there's now ways to get bonus content like first impression videos well before a review will come out or for many games I don't even end up reviewing. You can even vote for which games get reviewed on the channel. You can also see me opening up packages and getting content earlier than everyone else. Well, if you like that, you can check it out at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. Now, both of these games are very similar. Uh, they are, uh, you know, real-time cooperative games. I love real-time games, I love cooperative games, I love real-time cooperative games. If you don't like the pressure and you don't like real-time cooperative games, neither of these games are going to be for you because they are so similar in their DNA. So let's talk about the new things that are changed in this Fuse Countdown that I like better than the original. The special rolls with the abilities. It's great. Everyone, hey, uh, when I roll the dice and I have the bag, I can flip a die. Which, by the way, the dice don't flip the normal way you think they are. One's not a six, two's not a five, things like that. They're different. They did it on purpose so like it still makes you take some time off, which I thought was pretty clever. Um, they can change the die value. You can change the die color. Having these different abilities really helps with the flexibility, but also gives you another layer of depth. And, and I really like it. I would never not play with the special rules, even if you're teaching them for the first time. They're so simple. Get, you know, it's, it's awesome. I, I love that aspect of it. The spark cards. This is a big change in the game, and I love it. It makes the game just so it's more fun, really. In the original game, if you could, if any player could not place a die, they would roll that die. Then every player would have to remove either a number or a color of that die off their thing. Everyone's getting smacked in the face often in that game. And it doesn't feel good to be smacked in the face. I don't mind difficulty, but I don't necessarily like when getting smacked in the face. Now, granted, I'm saying this, I, I really enjoy Fuse. I still have it. I like it a lot. But this is such a better way to do that. Someone can't do it. Someone doesn't place a die. They're drawing a spark card. They're penalized, but not in a way, not even in a way that hurts as much as like, feel, that, that feels as much as a smack in the face of taking a die off something you've already done, 
but it's giving you a new challenge that you can delay, you can wait around, but it gives you more spaces, which means you're probably less apt to not be able to place a, uh, to not be able to place a dice later. But you can't win until all your spark cards are done. So it makes the game easier a little bit, but also harder a little bit because you can't win until they're gone. But it still gives you a, a negative feeling, but not a smack in the face negative feeling. This is I, I feel like this is a brilliant way that if you don't take a die, you're penalized, but it's in a fun way. This was this is a great idea. Uh, the split dice, really cool. Dice of two colors. Some of the new cards need split dice. Some of them don't care, but you can use either or. And now you've got more things to fight over and talk over, which takes more time. So yeah, it makes things easier, but at the same time, you've got more things to think about too. Love that aspect of it. New configurations. They've got a cool another wall configuration. They've got a zergit that you're building. All these different configurations that just make it more fun to build stuff. Um, you can still add the fuse cards if you want to, which makes the game a lot harder but they're not in there all the time. Uh, and you can mix with the original. Now, you would do this for only two reasons. One is if you wanna play with a higher player count. Uh, and two is if you want to uh, have more ways of changing the difficulty. Because between mixing the first, there's a whole page of the rules that says, you can make it easier by doing this, you can make it a little bit harder by doing this, and adding bits and pieces of each of the first and the second one together to do that. Um, so yeah, that's it. So in the end, Again, the, neither of these games are for you if you don't like real-time or pressure games. For me, this is a much better version of the original. To the point where if you couldn't mix these together, I would just get rid of the original and say, this is the only one I'm keeping. The fact that you can play this with more players and mix, you mixing the, the original with it, I'm going to keep both because... I mean, I can even keep them both in the same box and get rid of the box if I need space, right? Just bag them together inside the thing. That's probably what I'll do. Um, but I like the, just the ability to be able to, hey, we have a few extra players. Do you like real-time cooperative games? Let's kind of do this one together. It's fun. Because uh, this is one of those games that you play, and as people are watching you play it, they walk over like, what the heck are you guys doing? I want to try. Uh, you know, we're already at max player count. Well, now we can get you in, right? It probably doesn't happen that often, but it, it, is, it would be nice to do that. So for that reason, if you don't own Fuse at all, Fuse Countdown's the one to get. If you own Fuse, if you play it a lot and you still like it, I still recommend getting the new one because it makes the game better and then you'll still have the other one. That, if you play it a lot. If it's one that you play like once a year, eh, you're probably fine with Fuse. If you don't have Fuse, biggest no-brainer, get Countdown. And then only if you're gonna be playing it with more players would I say, sure, you need to get the other one. That's pretty much it. Fuse Countdown is a great improvement on the original. It's been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships with board games, and helping you on the next one you love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.